Hello. Welcome to the virtual classroom experience. I'm Vivian Stewart and I'm one of your librarians. And my task today is to simply introduce you to the InfoNet library and provide you with ways that you can search for substance abuse resources. Now, for some of you, this may be the first time you've ever attended one of our sessions. So let me just explain that everything that I will show you today is everything that we would actually go over if we were actually in a classroom setting or a computer lab. The only difference is that instead of you getting hands on experience today, I want you to try to search for some of these things on your own later on. So I want to show you just enough to kind of pique your interest so that you will go back and try to see what you can find on your own. Now, we're going to start off by just taking a look at the library's homepage so that you're able to navigate around it. So our starting point is, and you may want to write this down, www.southwest.tn.edu forward slash library. At the very top of our page, it says, Welcome to the InfoNet Library. And we have five locations for our students, faculty, and staff to use. The next thing you'll notice is a collage of photos that are taken from our campus location, which is Macon and Union. Followed by, of course, there's an announcement that we're closed to the public, but online library assistance is available through Ask a Librarian. The next thing you'll see is our mission statement, and this is what we are trying to accomplish throughout the school year, followed by what is considered to be our most prominent sites or the most visited pages, which will be our databases, which will provide you with the alternatives than using popular search engines all the time. Course reserves is where you would go if typically you were trying to find out if one of our locations had a print copy of a textbook that you could come in and use for a two hour period. Reserve a study room is available for any students who would like to use a group study room at one of the campus locations for a three hour period. We have a forms page, and this is where we gather feedback from you and also where you can request information and services from us. CyberCat is our online catalog, which is basically used to locate Southwest print holdings. WorldCat is a global catalog, which will allow you to do the same thing. SOAR is our discovery service, so you will see this. Over to the right hand side, it says instant message us. So there is a librarian that is actually online right now waiting to answer any incoming chat messages. And whenever we're not online, you have the ability to send us an email. There's a category that says links. You'll see featured resource, and this will give you a glimpse of some of the new materials that we have received. And if you were interested in knowing which of our locations actually had this particular item, you would just simply click on the image. To the left hand side, you'll see our widgets. So I will normally end with Ask a Librarian, which provides you with about eight different ways that you can get assistance. We have our own YouTube channel where you can view videos on your own to learn how to use our resources. The 360 virtual tour will allow you to get a glimpse of the inside of our five locations. Library webinars are online presentations similar to what we're doing now. These are live presentations. So if ever your schedule allows and you want to learn more about how to use our resources, simply join us for one of these. We have a social media presence on Facebook. Branch hours and info will not only give you basic operational hours, but you can also get a glimpse of the um, staff members who are at these locations. And the last item says report a problem. So if you ever experience any type of technical issues, please report it here so we could take care of that in a timely manner. As I scroll up a little bit under links, I am selecting library services and next circulation services. And there are three things I want to quickly talk about. When it comes to checking out materials, your college ID is what is required to check materials out from us, whether you want to uh, check a book out and take it home or check out a textbook and use in the library or check out equipment like a iPad or a laptop and use it for two hours. We need your college ID. 
It is also a campus policy that you're supposed to have your college ID on you at all times. So just keep that in mind. Get into the habit of always having it with you. The next place we're going is borrowing use agreements. Now, we maintain partnerships with each of the schools that is listed here. So typically, as a Southwest student, you can visit any of these locations and their students can visit us. Now, you need to make sure that you have your college ID and you need to be aware of what you can or you can't do or what your limitations are. So if you decided that you wanted to visit Christian Brothers University, that is a category A school. So they will allow you to check materials out. But when it comes to using their computers, well, you know, you just need to inquire because there may be some um, limitations on that. If you decided you wanted to visit a category D school like the University of Memphis Cecil C. Humphrey School of Law, they will allow you to use their resources, but you must use everything on site. So now keep in mind that during this pandemic, most of these locations are closed to um, everyone except for their own students, faculty and staff. So what I need you to understand from this is when things are back to normal and you decide that you want to visit one of these locations, that is fine. I just need you to keep in mind that we partner with these other schools to make sure that you have access to resources that we may not have. The last item says rules of conduct. So this is what is expected from anyone who visits one of our facilities. We expect everyone to monitor their noise level because the library is a place where students should be able to come and study without a loss of distractions. Number two says do not bring in food or beverages. If you visit the Bourne Bloom Library that is at the Macon Cove campus, we have the Cyber Cafe. And that is a place where you can go and you can eat and drink small items and then come back out into the library. Number three says do not misuse library property. We're only asking that you be respectful. So when you come in, please don't put your feet up in chairs. Please don't sit on the tables. Please don't write on our property. And in between classes, please don't come in and lie down in the lounge areas and decide to take a nap. Simply be respectful of the facility and people that are using it after you leave. The last one actually place your cell phones on vibrate and long conversations are not allowed. So this is not saying that you can't use the cell phones because you can, but when it is a distraction to others, like if you're carrying on a conversation with the speaker on and everyone can hear your conversation, that's a distraction. Or if you are FaceTiming someone, that is a distraction. So please step outside, finish your conversations, and then come back in. I invite you to revisit this page to look at other things that are on here. But at this time, what I am simply do is selecting the left arrow to go back. And on this page, I suggest that you look at off campus and frequently asked question. Going back one more time. And next we are moving to our databases page. So now I know at this point you possibly feel very comfortable using popular search engines like Google and Bing and Yahoo. And I understand that. I need you to understand now that you are a college student, you need to Always look for scholarly, authoritative, and credible information, and that is what our databases will provide for you. So at the very top, it lets you know that you can find ebooks, multimedia items, journal, and magazine articles, and we're going to look for all of these today. Now, when you're working remotely, a Southwest username and password is required for access. So if you know that you're having problems with the username or password, I suggest that you try to take care of this in advance by contacting a, staff, a library staff member or someone at the help desk. If later on you forget how to access one of the resources, but you remember the name, you can always go to the A to Z resource page. So let's take a look at our database page. We have an alphabetical listing of broad headings, starting with biographies, and the list goes down to science. So depending on what type of information we're looking for, we simply expand the category. So what I would like to do is I want to start off with locating books. Then we're going to move to how to locate magazine articles and then multimedia items. So I am expanding electronic books. 
and you'll see that there is a category that says databases and there's a category that says recommended websites. The databases are our paid subscriptions that we are maintaining. And if we come across any internet sites that we consider to be good, we will list them on the recommended websites. So my starting point is Net Library. This is our largest ebook collection. Now, of course, I am working remotely. I was online maybe about 10 minutes ago, so it did not prompt me to enter my username and password again. But when you start, keep in mind that that will be the first thing that you need to do. Now, this collection has over 265,000 books. So I am simply clicking inside of my search box and I am typing in substance abuse. Now, of course, I have a listing of options, so I simply select the first one. And I have 610 results. These are books that you can view online. Now, you have your title, you have your author's name and other publishing information, and you also have a picture of the book. If I simply select the title, the next page will provide me with any tools that I have access to. I have a description of the book and over to the left hand side, if I select PDF full text, this loads the book up for me so I can view the entire content of the book. So now over to the inside, you have our contents. You have tools across the top. This is the cover of the book. And in order to navigate through this book, I can either use my scroll bar on the side to go up and down from one page to the other, or I can use the navigational arrows. But the entire book is here for you. So this is Net Library. I'm simply closing this out. I also want you to be aware of ProQuest eBook Central. This collection has about 189,000 books in it. So let's perform substance abuse again. And, and these are just keyword searches that, I'm, that I am um, performing for you. Now, do not let this number fool you. 66,381, we do not have this many books on this topic. Remember, I performed the keyword search. So every time substance or abuse appear in a book somewhere, it puts it in this listing. Now, this first book is entitled Substance Abuse Handbook. You have your author's name, your publisher, and the date. If I simply select it by title, this loads the book up for me. I have my book details over to the right-hand side. It tells me how many pages I could copy, how many pages I could print from this book. And when I am ready, I simply select Read Online, which now loads the book up for me. And just as with Net Library, your table of contents appears over to the left-hand side. This is the cover area. You have tools across the top that you can use. And in order to use any of these tools, you need to create an account, which is a free account. To navigate through this book, I could simply use my navigational arrows up at the top, or you could use your scroll bar. The entire contents of the books are here for you. So this is ProQuest eBook Central. We have one more that I want to look at, which is Credo Reference. Now with Credo Reference, we're not going to search for substance abuse. Let's say that I need to find information on a drug. And let's say the drug that I need to find information on is marijuana. So I have now typed in my topic. I press enter. And this is what I have. It starts off with information coming from the Blacks Medical Dictionary that I could click on read more if I wanted to. Over to the side, for anyone who's more visual, this starts off with our topic and it tells you how these different things can branch off from there. It found 1,723 results for me. So it's not the entire books, but information on my topic available in these books. So you have your topic from tells you the title of the book where your information is coming from. It pulls a couple of sentences from the book. You can save the ones you like and come back to later. Tells you how many words. And then these key concepts are, can allow you to search for additional type of information. So if I wanted to see this information, I simply select my topic. 
and it will now display the full text information coming from that particular source. Your tools are provided up at the very top and there's a tool that will allow you to listen to this, translate it, print it out, even share it with somebody else. And then once again, these are related searches you can perform. So if you need to find information from books, you can use any of the things listed here. The next place that we are going is to the category of database collection. So this time we're going to try to find magazine articles. And we're starting with TEL, which stands for the Tennessee Electronic Library. And if you happen to forget how to use this, there's a category that says multimedia. And multimedia will provide you with the videos that you can watch. So you can watch a video on how to use this source. I am selecting it to open it up. And TEL has over 60 titles. About to do is search through all of these titles at one time. And the way that you would do that is simply click on Select All. And now our topic this time will be um, chemical dependency. OK, and now I'm searching. And once again, this is a keyword search that we are performing. OK, now that my page is loaded under showing results for this is the total number of general magazine articles that found on my topic. Academic journals are more scholarly type publications where people have done research. I have a large number of books. I have a very large number of newspaper articles. I have images. I have videos I can watch it. Then I have audios that I can listen to. You could narrow your results down by publication date, subject, document type. I am selecting full text documents to remove any abstracts, any citations. And my numbers came down, but not a lot. So now when you look at your results, keep in mind that everything will not be something that you can use. So you need to use your best judgment skills. So when you look at your citations or your results list, what you have is the title of your articles are listed first. You have your author's name, the source that it came from. It provides you with the date tells you how many words, and then it tells you what type of document. So this happens to be an interview, okay? It pulls a couple of sentences from this resource, and then it tells you the source on the previous page where it came from. Now, this is an interview. I don't really want to view this one, but maybe the next one will be something that I could use. But then, as you can see, it is a book review. So you kind of need to look closely at your results before you actually select one. So let's say that I may want to look at this one. So I simply select it by clicking on the title. And now I have the full text of the article. Now you have some tools across the top and one of them says cite. And your instructor will talk to you a little bit more about citing your resources so you will not be accused of plagiarism. But this is a tool that will cite your resources for you in MLAA, APA 6, Chicago 17th. You have a tool that would translate this into multiple languages. You can increase or decrease the font size. You can listen to this being read to you. If you have a Gmail account, you may want to send this to your Google Drive to keep it there. Using your Southwest credentials, you can send it to the Microsoft OneDrive. You can send this to another email you have, or you could download this information to a USB drive if you would like. So as you're reading through this article, you're looking for information that you could share back with your instructor or with your other classmates. You're not just going to copy and paste something from here and try to use it as your own because that's plagiarism. So there's a tool that will help you to just pick out the things that you know that you want to use. So by using my mouse, if there was something in this paragraph that I like, I simply take my mouse and I highlight it. Now, when you release your mouse, there's an option that says highlight. I could choose the color of my choice and it highlights it for me. Then I could continue reading and repeat this once more. Now, if you wanted to, you could just download just the highlighted portions only. OK, you also have something that says more like this. 
and then you have some related subjects. So you can go to substance abuse treatment from here if you wanted to. Now, once again, I want to repeat, I know that you feel very comfortable using Google, Bing, and so on. These are the type of resources that your instructor is expecting from you. Something where people have done research, things that are considered to be credible. So when you're introduced to new resources, start using them so you can see just how easy they are to use. So this is the Tennessee Electronic Library. So let's see, where are we going next? Let's go to the category of, let's see, just scroll down a little bit. What about medicine health? So as you can see up on the medicine health, we have a large number of databases along with the recommended websites. And then there are lots of videos that you can watch that are here also. So let's go to health and wellness. Okay, so with health and wellness on my list this time, let's try to find something on um, addictions. I press and enter. Okay, so under showing results for, I have a large number of books that I can get information on. Okay, I have uh, some audios I can listen to. I have magazine articles, newspaper articles, videos, academic journals, and images. Now, this is just addiction, but let's say I really wanted to find something on opiate addiction. So we're just going to go back and retype this in. Okay, So this kind of narrowed it down a little bit and I have 53 books. OK, now, of course, it's only showing us three of them. But if I wanted to see all 53, I just simply click here. And then I have audios, I have magazines, newspaper articles, videos, academic journals and images. So if you want to take this from a medical standpoint, you know, here's a database that you can use. OK, we're just going to do one more. So let's scroll down to the category that says periodicals. And under periodicals, I am selecting Omnifile full text. OK, so this time let's go back to substance abuse. Thirty five thousand five hundred and ten. Now, everything that is in this database is not full text. So under limit two, I need to select full text. And look how many we have dropped down to. So a lot of those were just abstracts that we do not have access to. So with the results that we have now, you have your title, you have your author's name, you have the source that it came from. And I have an option that says PDF full text. So this is the full text. It just shows you the way it looked when it was scanned from the original source. Okay. You have your tools that are provided over to the right hand side. Over to the left hand side, other articles that appeared in that particular source are provided for you here. So let's close this out. Okay, so now we've done books, we've done magazine articles. Now let's look for some videos, DVDs. So we are going to the Master Academic Collection. This collection has over 42,000 titles. And we're going to do substance abuse. I have 1,923 results. And if I was interested in substance abuse risk factors, I simply select it. This cues it up for me. I can just look at that segment if I want to. You can view the full transcript. You can watch it in its entirety, turn on closed captioning, even make it full screen if you like. There are tools that are provided. You have a description of the video. And then these are different tags that would allow you to branch out into other segments. 
You may also want to use Academic Video Online Premiere. Now, this collection, it has about 77,000 titles. So when it opens up, we will perform the same search. Okay, 10,088. Just now remember, this is just a keyword search. So we got substance abuse and the elderly, substance abuse disorders. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Relapse and recovery. So there's some things here that may be very helpful for you all. Okay, coping with an alcoholic parent. So let's close this out. Okay, so now that was a category of multimedia. I also want you to be aware of under humanity, social sciences, and up under multimedia, we have the counseling and therapy and video or psychology counseling video online. So these may be some titles that you wanna look at also. Now, I know that every course has some type of writing component, so we're not going to spend lots of time, but I want you to be aware of the category that says grammar. And up on the recommended websites, these are things that will help you improve your writing skills. But I want to show you the thesis builder because every paper that you do, it has to have a thesis statement to let the reader know what your paper is about. So this will help you formulate one. You simply need to answer these questions. And then you will click on build a thesis and based upon what you have placed here, it will provide you with a suggested thesis statement. And if you don't like it, you can just simply revise it. Now, this is not plagiarism as long as you don't copy and paste something directly from a source and try to use it as your own. If you click on make an online outline, it will place everything in outline format so you can stay on target when you're writing. Now, after you have written something, we have a source that will proof it for you, and that's called Grammarly. In order for you to use Grammarly, you need to create your own account. So this is your registration page. It asks you for your name. It asks you for your email, and you must use your Southwest email and ask you for a password. When you click on sign up, an email goes to your Southwest email, and you have to complete the validation and wait for your welcome your welcome message. So when you have your own account, you can copy and paste whatever you have written into Grammarly and it will proof it for grammatical errors, spelling errors, and also plagiarism if you ask it to. It will give you the total number of alerts that it found and those are problems. It will give you suggestions of how you can correct them. It will give you an explanation of why it was wrong or it could even allow you to just simply dismiss it. Now, whatever you create in Grammarly has to be downloaded back down to your computers. I want you to also know that you may want to work with a tutor in the Academic Support Center or through online tutoring. You may want to submit your paper and let it be proved for you also. So now we're going back now to the library's web page. And I want to show you our discovery service. So here, let's try drug testing. So what this is doing is pulling together all of our resources, print and electronic, on drug testing, placing everything in one place for you. And you may be wondering, why didn't I show you this at first? I really wanted you to see the of databases that we have. So this is our results number, 3,251,376. This number is too massive. So over to the left-hand side, I'm selecting full text online which is removing any print resources. Under content types, and as you can see this list goes on, I can select magazine articles. Under publication date, I can select the last 12 months. I'm now down to 2042. So you have your titles of your articles, you have your author's name, you have the source that it came from, it pulls a couple of sentences, and then these are your tools that you have over to the side. So if there is a article that you like, you would just simply select it, and this now will queue it up, and it will show you the full text of the article, which we have here. 
So if you just rather go to one place and spend your time here, you can use our discovery service. The last thing I want to do is show you how to get help later on because, you know, I've gone over a lot of information. So you may want to use our YouTube channel to try to find a video that you can watch. And if you just simply search here, like if you forget how to use the thesis builder, just search for the word thesis and it will give you that listing. OK. And then we have Ask a Librarian. And I'm just trying to get back now to the libraries page. And I think my page is still trying to load, so it won't allow me to go back yet. Okay, so now let's go to Ask a Librarian. So if you would like a librarian to work with you individually on a project, just so simply go to the research coach, let us know what is good time, and a librarian will be assigned to work with you and will contact you. Ref chatter. The librarian is online. These are the hours of operation. Now, do not just simply send us questions and expect us to answer them. What we would do is direct you to where you can go to find the answers you need. You can send us a text message using this number, and these are the hours of operation. You could chat with us on our Facebook page. When it comes to telephone numbers, we have um, staff members who are responding back to any um, voice messages. In all of the online classes, if you go to the class list, you'll see Ask a Librarian listed, so you can ask us questions there and we will respond. BombGuard is a software that will allow us to remote out to your computers if you're having problems. This is our departmental email that you can use at any time. And if you can't think of any other way to reach us, you can always go to report a problem and contact us there. OK, so I'm back at the library's homepage. So I hope that I have not just given you too much information, but I wanted to give you enough so that you would feel comfortable trying to go out and investigate on your own. At this point, I'm about to stop sharing my screen. So I hope that this has been a, a good experience and I hope that you will start using our resources more. Remember, you can always go to Ask a Librarian at any point and contact one of us for assistance. Thank you so much. And um, I hope that you have a great day.